Today, we dive into an often untapped way to grow your brand by appearing on people's podcasts. We're going to cover how to find them and what to do once you are in the hot seat. Next on Make and Bacon. Hey there, I'm Jason Logston, and this is Making Bacon. We're all about helping you serve your fans, grow your income, and get the most out of your blog. Today's episode is brought to you by my very own self-publishing 101 course. The average home cook owns almost 50 times more printed cookbooks than PDF cookbooks. So why are you limiting yourself? With the advent of print-on-demand companies like Amazon KDP and Ingram Spark, it is now easier than ever to become your own publisher. But if you don't know what you're doing, you can waste not only your time, but also your money. After publishing 15 cookbooks, including a top 10 cookbook on Amazon, I know publishing, especially self-publishing, and I want to share my expertise with you. And that's where my video course comes in, stepping you through the entire self-publishing process so you can get your printed book up for sale on Amazon without making any mistakes. You can check it out at makethatbacon.com slash publish now. Now, on to the show. As bloggers, we are often trying to grow our following and expand our network so we will become more enticing to publishers, brands, and agents. One very effective way to do this is by appearing on podcasts. But how do you find them and what do you do once you are on there? Luckily, today's guest is the perfect person to help us out. He is a serial entrepreneur who has built several globally successful businesses since he quit his real job in 2005. Billed as the UK podcast expert, he is the CEO and co-founder of Rebel Base Media, a podcast tech and strategy company that owns Captivate FM, Productivity, Podcast Websites, Podcast Success Academy, and Rebel Base Studios. He is well known as an insightful, thought-provoking, and actionable podcast industry keynote speaker. He's also a wildly approachable Brit, Star Wars and DC Comics geek, and believes that good business starts with being good to people. I can't wait to learn from today's guest, coming to us from the world's only growth-oriented podcast hosting platform, Captivate FM, Mark Asquith. Mark, welcome to Making Bacon. Did I write that? Because that's a really good intro. Thanks, Jason. That's awesome. Because yeah. I don't think I'd be able to write that about myself. So that's badass. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Well, I can't wait to dive into podcast interviews. But before we get started, I always like to ask, what's it like around your dinner table on a typical day? Funny you should have mentioned the old cookbooks, Jason. I've been getting back into cooking. I'm, I'm not very good at cooking. And, and, and my fiance, Sam, she's very good at delivering expletives during cooking. So I'm sort of taking the pressure a little bit with that. So I've actually been learning a little bit and what you said about the cookbooks resonates with me, man, because I'm just on a cookbook hunt. I've got the most recent two that I bought a Jamie Oliver one and I bought a Betty Crocker's one a while ago. So we've got Sam and I, you know, we've got no kids yet. We're still still in the throes of our I want to kind of say our youth, but our early middle age. And uh, <laughs> so we're normally cooking something up that's, that's a little bit tasty. And I'm sort of learning my way around the kitchen. And, and, and what's been fascinating, actually, is I never realized how much stuff you needed. But once you got it, how little you need to replenish it. So, like, this is amazing to me because, like, the shopping bill every week is going down and down and down because I've got all the herbs now and the spices and the this and the that and the, you know, the, the, the cooking materials. And so now it's just the base ingredients every time. And it's fascinating me, mate. It's like, wait a sec, I'm, a, I'm actually learning to cook. I'm eating better. It tastes better. And the costs are coming down. Like, why didn't I do this sooner? So, yeah, that that's my cooking life, mate. <laughs> It is funny that a lot of stuff you just need like a small amount of it. But mm. the, when you're first getting started, it's like, I have none of this stuff and it's expensive to get started. Once you do, it's like, okay, now I can kind of reply, rely on what's in my cabinet and not, not have to hit the store every single time. That's it. What's been the favorite dish you've made lately? Oh, I did a Spanish griddled steak dish the other day, which was uh, <clears throat> very Mediterranean, a bit of, bit of sun-dried tom uh, tomato dressing on it that we made. Some dried tomato, a bit of basil in there, some olive oil, and just very simple stuff. But the way that the way that we griddled the the steak was beautiful. We both really liked the steak. But I think the secret addiction is that we, we did some really simple appetizers, a baked camembert pasta. Dude, that is, you know, that's like crack. You know, I was on that. <laughs> I didn't want to stop eating that one, which is why I might add, Jason, through lockdown, I've put on like 50 pounds or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was doing really good on lockdown and then it just turned a corner and I have not been doing, uh, now that we're emerging. So I, I should have done it the opposite direction and it would have worked a lot better, but <laughs> <laughs> 
So I want to dive into podcasts because social media and SEO are kind of like the bread and butter of food blogging. Everyone uses them and you use that a lot to kind of build your foundation, but to really stand out and truly grow your brand, you usually need to do something more and often something different that other people aren't doing. Can you talk a little bit about how going on podcasts can help you expand your brand and get in front of new audiences? Yeah. So, so being on a podcast is, is, is very much part of the marketing mix now you know i always see podcasts of, uh, as one of three types of media the number one type of media is you know the entertainment media the sort of you know you might have someone like jamie anderson who runs anderson entertainment who owns thunderbirds and captain scarlet and stingray you know the old super marionation stuff like they produce content because it's content and it's ip it's brilliant stuff and it's that's entertaining the second thing about podcasts is that they can also be sort of marketing for something else. So they can be, you know, as we're going to talk about with the food blogging, they can be marketing for other facets of a business or they can be the business themselves. You know, they can be the media that you sell. And that middle one is very, very interesting to me because, you know, if, if someone has a presence, wherever that might be, like I'm a big staunch fan of YouTube. You know, if you see anyone looking at the video version, you'll see a guitar in the back further down there. There's a bass guitar and there's a keyboard, like piano behind me. Like I'm into my music, but I'm always trying to get better because I'm not very good. Just like my cooking. So <laughs> I'm always watching like tutorials on, you know, the, the, the next scale that I need to learn or the best practice techniques to warm up quickly, you know, things like that. But those very same people, the people that I consume media from in different areas as well. So as an example of that, Scott's Bass Lessons, which is an online membership, like I pay for his memberships, like 120 bucks a year. I consume Scott's content on YouTube when I'm actively looking for it. But what the big thing is, uh, and I was talking to someone else about this earlier, is that, you know, when I'm now driving, so now we're back to work after COVID, you know, I jump in the car and I'm like, do you know what, actually, I'm in the mood for either some inspiration or listening to some behind the scenes on, you know, learning to play a better bass. I'm going to see if Scott's got a podcast, you know, and sure enough, he has. So what happens is that he reinforces his brand in my eyes. You know, he's the expert to me and he can deliver different types of content in different ways, you know, very passive style content through podcasts or very active consumption stuff sort of through YouTube or blogging uh, and through his membership. So when it comes to guesting on podcasts, yes, and the, 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 the way to think about this is it's very much about a sort of three pronged approach. You know, it's me as the food blogger being able to go out there and reinforce that I'm the expert by talking very clearly about the thing that I'm great at on as many other people's podcasts as I can. It's also number two, the fact that I can open up other audiences that might want to consume what I'm interested in and what I do, you know, they want to get into my niche, you know, maybe I've got a specialist um, sort of food blog and I cover like we talked about maybe Mediterranean dishes. That's the only thing that we talk about. And the person that's really, really focused on one type of dish suddenly hears you on a podcast and actually that entire range of cuisine is opened up and that's a new interest for them. And you become, this is the kicker, you become the expert because they've heard you on that podcast. You're the first person they think of. And the third part of that as well is, you know, if you go down the route of creating your own podcast in the future, which I think is very useful, if you've been a guest, you, you've already got a leg up, you know, you've already got, you've probably got a decent microphone. You've probably got like, we've got here, we've got a decent camera set up each, you know, we've got the headphones that we need and we know how to deliver our message. So it's not just, you know, blogger turned podcaster kind of trying to figure it out. It's really powerful blogging setup is enhanced by a really powerful podcasting setup from day one. You know, as an example of this, I'm talking to Yarrow Starrick tomorrow. He's obviously he's a, he's a, he's a very popular blogger. One of the OG bloggers, in my opinion, we work with Yarrow on, on, on some of his podcast work. He's revitalizing his podcast and he was like, what do I do? You know, what, where do I start with this sort of thing? So it's, it, it, this, this is a very common thing and guesting on podcasts is the most useful way to get started with podcasting because you get all of the exposure and only do like a little bit of the work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like you get to show up here and you get to spend 30 minutes talking to me and then I will go off and spend time editing it and preparing for the interview before this happened. Like a lot of the work goes on the, the podcast. So that makes a lot of sense. It gets you in front of a new audience and it allows you to 
be positioned as the expert. My audience probably now views you as the podcasting expert because you're one of the first podcasters I've had on talking about it. So it kind of reinforces the brand. I think that makes a lot of sense. How do you actually find podcasts to go on? Do you just search, you know, food podcast and listen to 500 hours of episodes until one clicks in your mind? Or is there a kind of a more efficient way to go about that? Yeah, so there are a couple of ways, and that's that's a, an insightful question, man. And I think you know the, the the two main ways of doing it are, as you've just suggested, you manually do it, which I'm actually a huge fan of, and I'll get to some of that in a second. But there are sort of booking agencies that you can use. You know, there's some free ones, and we could probably split this category down just a touch further. So there are like the manual booking companies like Interview Valley and Interview Connections, run by Jess and uh, run by Tom Schwab. And, you know, you pay them a little bit of money and they'll source things and podcast for you to guest on. They'll do all the lifting and they'll sort of chew to you on being a good guest and all that kind of good stuff. Or you can use apps as well. So there, there are apps like Guestio, which is a platform by uh, Travis Chapel. There's another chap called Alex Sanfilippo that's got an online platform to kind of just, you know, you put your name down and... People reach out to you and vice versa, you can reach out to them. So like, th th there's a couple of ways that you can do it without listening to the podcasts, which I, I, I get that, you know, if people are busy, but the, the, the easiest way, honestly, is to, is to just be in communities where podcasts ex exist. You know, I, I do a heck of a lot of podcast guesting myself, even though I, I've got countless podcasts and, you know, I work in podcasting every single day, but I do I do shows like this all of the time. And, they, you know, they largely come from two separate setups. Either me listening to a podcast and thinking, wait a sec, I could talk about this thing and probably help the the, 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 the podcaster out. And, you know, we'll talk about that, that logic in a sec. Or the other thing, which is very, very interesting, is that if you do other things to make noise. So a great example of that is Twitter is like virtual summits, you know, I did a lot of virtual summit, you summits, you know, you and I met when I did one and, and, and I, I, you know, I delivered a, a, a talk on podcasting and you sort of said, well, that'd be quite interesting for my audience. So they're really interesting ways of doing it without having to go through and listen to podcasts. However, you know, there are some, in my view, there are some best practices. Like if you've not listened to a podcast, don't pretend you've listened to it. You know, we'll talk about, I'm sure, how to work with the podcaster to the very best of your ability as a guest. And the the, the big no-no, which is the, the, the bridging between being a good guest and trying to book guest gigs, the big bridging thought to have, the big overarching thing to keep in your mind is, like, don't make stuff up. The amount of <laughs> pictures that I get, man, honestly, you wouldn't believe it, right? So I run a solo podcast. I've not had guests on my podcast since about March 2016, all right? To this day, people email me saying, and I'm talking four times a week. Hi, Mark, love your podcast. We think that our client would be a great fit for it. I'm like, well, what do you like about it if you think your guest would be a great fit? Is it the fact that I don't have guests? You know, and it's... <laughs> Like, and you, every now and again, if, I, if I'm in one of those moods, I'll reply with that sort of bit of banter and they're like, oh crap, sorry about that. Like, that's the biggest no-no. That's the biggest turn-off with all of that stuff. So just, you know, keep that in mind when finding podcasts. But yeah, you know, in, in my view, it would be be in communities where podcasts exist. Look at adding some value. Look at positioning, positioning yourself as the expert. You can do that in communities. You can do it through virtual uh, summits or, you know, you can do it online, social media. That works very well. And people will ask you. But always be confident in being able to say as well, like, you know, you might do it on Twitter. Just put yourself out there. Anyone want any podcast guests that talk about X, Y, and Z? Because that's what I talk about, you know, and people will respond if you're in those communities. So um, a, bit, a bit of a multi-layered answer. But there are multiple ways of doing it. The, the, the simplest way is go back to basics and just be present and ask, does anyone want a guest? Yeah, be in the places where the people you would like to get contacted with are, consume mm -hmm. the media that the people you want to be contacted with are putting out, and then try to find a, a best fit for if you write about vegan blogging, you shouldn't go on the carnivore podcast or something because <laughs> you wouldn't have much to add to it, you know? Once you find a podcast you think you'd be a good fit for, how do you reach out about an interview? How do you kind of present yourself as someone that they would want on their podcast that you could add value to? Yeah, that again, another another good question. The 
the the biggest turn off, and this is just for me, like, but I do know other podcasters that have done this, and conversely, you know, I've done a lot of pitching in my time. I try not to do it anymore with with the software company Captivate because it's, it's software, you know. But you know, back in the agency days, I did a lot of pitching, and we've helped podcasters. Like when I used to do some podcast coaching, you know, I've helped podcasters that have got three figure downloads, you know, less than a thousand downloads per episode, get six figure sponsorship deals and earn amazing livings. And the, 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 the premise of doing that pitching is the same as this guest pitching. And there is nothing that will turn someone off more than chapter and verse, you know, war and peace. Like, man, we love what we do. All right. Like, I like what you do, but all you need to do is tell me what you do and tell me when you do it. Like, I don't care about your background. I don't care about where you live. I don't care about how many downloads your show gets. I don't care about any of that stuff. Like you emailed me and just said, dude, saw you on this thing. It'd be really cool if we talked about this. I talk about this. Okay, that sounds good. So <laughs> that sounds very flippant. But the, the, the thing to remember and the, 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 the way that you structure your pictures is this. Short and sweet. All right. Why do you want to be a guest? What can you talk about and when are you available? Now, more often than not, you know, you'll book something through a booking link or whatever. But just be straight to the point. Hi, Jason, it's Mark. I can talk about podcasting. I see you've got a food blogging audience. Be pretty cool if they learn a bit about podcasting. Here's my Twitter, at Mr. Asquith. I'm pretty active. Reply to me if you want me to get on the show. And by the way, you're the host. I'm flexible around you as much as I can be. Like, that's it. Like we get them all the time where it's like, hi, my client is XYZ and he's done all these things and they've got this this kind of 50,000 set of qualifications and they've made this amount of revenue and they live here. Here are 50 quotes from this person and like here's all the social media assets and you're like, I ain't reading that. <laughs> like you lost me at dear Mark, you know. <clears throat> so to stand out, be succinct, be clear and be uh, humble enough to be flexible. You know, you, you can't always find the right time and that's all right. You know, it's up to you and the host to find the mutually beneficial time. So short, sweet, succinct, to the point, and just completely humble all the way through. And you, you will get more conversions doing that than you will, you know, sending a bloody big pitch deck. You know, no one wants that. I feel like every time I get a long email, I always mark that as like, I should remember to go back and look at this when I have time and that moment <laughs> tends to never never occur that I have the time to do that <laughs> mate honestly like I've just moved my emails to superhuman the old it's like sits on gmail so that I can mm -hmm. triage them like when you've got an inbox that you have to bloody triage and then someone's pitching you their client who's created a software startup in Guatemala and scaled it to like 10 users you're like that you know I don't I don't want this big thing. You know, I'll come back to that later. And then you're right, three weeks later, you're thinking to yourself, forgot about that. So whereas the <laughs> quick one, you know, if you, like when you, when you reached out to me, I was like, yeah, this seems like a good guy. Of course I will. You know, it was just bang, bang, bang. Let's do this. And that's what you want when you're pitching, right? So you finally get on the interview. That light goes on that says you are now live. What's the bo best way to both, you know, get, maximum value for yourself out of it, but also to provide value to the, to the, to the host of the podcast you're on. Well, this, this goes back to pitch mode. You know, have you ever been in a bar or a pub and someone says, you know, tell me about the thing that you do, you know, food blogging or podcasting and you instantly drop into pitch mode because it's your, it's your, it's your microphone. It's your defense mechanism. It's the crutch. It's the thing that you lean on is to go into pitch mode and tell someone why you love it so much. That kind of doesn't work in podcasting. A lot of people will do that. And a lot of people will be, you know, like, tell me about your book that you've launched. And you'll be like, oh my God, yeah, this is amazing. I'll tell you all about my book. <laughs> Actually, that's like the worst way to be a guest. You know, you, because podcasts are there for education and entertainment purposes. And the more that you can lean into entertainment, the more that people will remember your education. You know, like I'm, I'm quite frenetic, as you can see, like I'll talk a lot and I'm all over the place, but people remember because what I do is, and it's, it's, it's sort of semi-natural, but also semi-well-practiced because I've done it very purposely for such a long time. You know, I will, I'll go off and I'll tell a little story and relate it to something, but then I'll sort of land on one line that people remember, like I do it, that's sort of the process. And I think if you can do that, 
if you can understand, you know, think about media training, you know, when you, when you talk to, to, to do media interviews, you write down three or four things that if you got one of those in on the interview, it'd be a really big win. And if you can do that for your podcast interviews, like what's the big thing? Well, it might be my new cookbook that I've got coming out. All right. But you, you asked this question earlier on, and it might be something along the lines, of, you know, tell me about your kitchen setup or tell me about what dinner time looks like. If I'm selling a cookbook, I'm like, oh, actually, it's funny you should say that. You know, me and Sam, you know, we're just getting back into cooking. It's really, really interesting. And she likes cooking a bit of spaghetti, but that's as far as it reaches on. Oh, you know what? That's what inspired me to create this brand new cookbook, which I'll tell you about on Twitter at Mr. Asquith. And, you know, then I carry on with the story. I don't dwell on this pitch, you know. So a lot of people drop into that pitch mode, and that's a really bad way of doing it. But if you can make a, a media list, bulleted list, here are the four or the three things that, if I can get them in and talk about them on this interview, that would be a really big win. If I can't, all well and good, I'll still deliver some value. The other thing that I would say as well <clears throat> is that try and understand that you aren't getting paid for these interviews. You know, you're getting paid in, in reach or you're getting paid in, in, in goodwill. You know, let's get some assets out of it. So what I'm talking about here is, you know, can I use the video? Can I use some of the snippets of the audio to promote myself? And try and get in there as naturally as you can. Just the one single place where people should connect with you. And, and make it abundantly clear that it's all right to do that. So what a lot of podcast hosts do is they'll say things like, right at the end, tell me where people can find you online. And you're like, well, that's a great idea, but no one listens to the end of an episode. Because when, when they recognize it's coming up to the end, they're like, well, I don't want to, this bit's boring now. We've done the good bit. So for me... If I'm guesting, what I'll do is I'll be, I'll be saying things like, you know, when I'm on Twitter at Mr. Asquith, you know, what I'm thinking about is this. And it's it, it's not forced, but I'm getting a little bit of equity back because people are still hearing it six, seven, eight times rather than at the end when they're like, oh, I'll turn this off. So to summarize that, don't drop into pitch mode. Try and be entertaining, but in order to get what you need out of it, number one, write a list of things, three or four things that you would be delighted to cover that you can just drop in okay and number two try and get paid a little bit get some assets from it whether that's followers or whatever and just sprinkle that in as you're delivering your stories and as a bonus tip that will be the other thing work on stories have some anecdotes you know that's vital people will forget the name of your book but they are remember the story that you told about it and then they can use a little thing called Google to find the name of your book later if they remember your story. But if they don't remember that, they're never look for it. Well, that's actually to that point, you know, that's why, you know, when you look on my Twitter, it's that British podcast guy, it's on my website. People can forget my name. That's all right. I don't care about that. But they'll see like that's a, that's a tale that I tell. It's the British podcast guy, you know, and some people like other people in Britain are like, well, I'm a man and I'm in podcasting. I'm that British podcast guy too. I'm like, well, you didn't. <laughs> You've not got the domain for it, so you can't be, you know? So, like, <laughs> you, you, you create something that is, like you said, very memorable, just a little hook that they can hook to. And like you said, that storytelling, or it's a little notable piece of information about you. That's very, very important. You, you become more practiced with that, you know? You become more well-versed in delivering that as well. So, yeah, I would, I would highly recommend that people do that sort of thing. Well, Mark, I really appreciate you coming on, sharing your expertise, I know you're on a time crunch. I appreciate you carving some time out. Could you spend just maybe 60 seconds talking about the, for my audience that's interested in starting a podcast, why Captivate FM is a host that they should explore? Oh, of course. Like I'd be delighted. So thanks for giving me the chance to do that. Captivate is just about growth. You know, anyone can host your podcast and distribute it to Apple and Spotify. Like we shouldn't be applauded for doing the basics. What we do is we, we, we teach how to build your podcast. We give you the tools that you need that no one else does. To, to make it easier to grow your podcast. The analytics will give you the single promotional link rather than telling people, go and listen in your podcast app. You know, we give people a single promo link that's measurable and tangible, which as we all know, because, you know, as bloggers, data matters. That's what we focus on. It really is about the growth, but it's also about the support, the community. We, you know, we do a heck of a lot of deep dive, deep dive masterminds and growth clinics and member spotlights and education around just using specific marketing tactics to grow your audience so it's just frankly like it's set up because i wanted to grow my podcast so we just built a tool that i wanted and now we now we sell it to people so yeah
and I'm always very willing to help people. You know, that's, that's what we do. Well, I really appreciate it. Everyone listening, you can find Mark everywhere at Mr. Asquith on all social media. And thank you so much for coming on. I had a great time learning from your expertise. And this has been Making Bacon. We're all about helping you serve your fans, grow your income, and get the most out of your blog. Until next time, I'm Jason Logston.